The Health Minister, Jonathan Coleman, says he's taking a paper to Cabinet shortly detailing mental health initiatives to be funded by a $100 million fund flagged in the budget. The new cross-government social investment fund will trail initiatives tackling the root of mental health issues. The government has been under pressure over mental health services with an unprecedented growth in demand for specialist mental health services in Canterbury since the 2011 quakes and a national suicide rate of more than 500 people a year. Dr. Coleman today launched a new free 24-7 phone and text number that will make it easier for people to connect with mental health and addictions professionals. Just before we came on air, I asked him what the number 1737 would do. Well, basically, it's one number, easy to remember, that's the gateway to a range of uh, phone-based services. So at the moment, you know, there's a, a range of numbers people have to call. Is it the depression line, you know, alcohol and drugs? Is it the gambling line? This is going to be a simple gateway to those services where people can access the help they need. And the other thing is often people have a range of issues. You know, they know that they need some sort of help, but there may well be some overlap. So it simplifies things. It gets a national conversation going around, you know, remembering this number and, and getting it stamped on people's consciousness, really. Okay, 1737. You say in your release the same trained mental health professionals who currently respond to calls across the existing national telehealth service will be on hand. So yeah, this isn't right. a new service as such, it's just a new gateway to it. It's more accessible, absolutely. So it's, you know, making it easier for people to negotiate. And I mean, look, um, could you tell me the uh, number for the depression line off the top of your head? I mean, most people probably couldn't, but the idea is they'll know 1737 and they'll know that, you know, when they're not feeling right for whatever reason, it's the gateway to services. I suspect a lot of people could have told you Lifeline's number and the government stopped funding it. Wasn't that an existing service that was doing tremendously yeah. well? So, so don't forget, they were in the tender to provide the New Zealand National Telehealth Service, but it's quite a complicated contractual story. But in the end, they withdrew their tender. OK. What about overall government support for mental health services? There is still a sense that it is not enough. Well, you know, we're putting more in and we're determined to raise and increase access to services. I mean, I was in the, at the World Health Organisation about four weeks ago and the Canadian minister got up and said, look, this is an area, uh, mental health uh, issues, that's just taken off literally exponentially in terms of demand and all governments are seeking new solutions. So, yep, we've put in new money. Uh, 224 million at the budget. Over Money's four years. Up. Over four yep, years. Yep, the budget's gone up from 1.1 to 1.4. Over four uh, billion. years. Yep. Um, no, that's per year. That's what it is. Um, but we're looking for new ways to do things. So that's why we're working on the mental health strategy. And that's going to be a strategy that says, look, it's not just a health issue. It actually extends to what we're doing in education, uh, in the uh, social and justice areas. And I think, look, the, the track of this thing is going to be we move from deinstitutionalisation. We've had a focus on destigmatisation. We've got to continue that. But I think the next thing is really going to be about uh, resilience, wellness, and much earlier detection of issues. We're it's still it's, it's, it's about access people. to services, though. All of those things yeah, are about no, access important. to services. And look, everyone yeah. I've spoken to, and I'm sure you know because we keep trying to get you on the program, that Checkpoint has done a lot of work on this. We're delighted to have you tonight. It says the money is our response, but there is not a single person I've spoken to who says the provision of mental health services is going to be able to keep up with the demand for mental health services as a result of that extra money? Well, the point is we've got to do things differently, and that's why this initiative today is really important. John, you should go and visit the National Telehealth Service. I think you'd be quite impressed. OK, I'd like to do that, yeah, and that's a nice invitation. It. Can we talk about, for example, the Canterbury DHB? They are so stretched that my sense is they're breaking. I have never spoken to people in the health sector who seem as up against it as they do. They need more money, they need more staff, they need more support. Yeah, and look, they have had more money in this budget. Um, the fact is, you talk to the CE down there, he will tell you that everyone is still getting the services they need. But the fact is, mental health is a difficult area. I mean, one of the things that we have focused on is the emergency uh, response initiative. So the 111 calls now, if there's a mental health component, they're triaged through to the National Telehealth Service and people are able to be put in touch 
with the services they need rather than be, you know, a, an issue that the police need to follow up on. So, look, there's always more to do, but in actual fact, waiting times across the country, including Canterbury, have decreased over time. There's more money and there's more services, but we've still got to do more, and that's what we're focusing on. And in terms of doing more, obviously the highest, highest youth suicide rate in the Western world, uh, as yep. you say, an exponential demand. Sorry, the Western world is not quite the right phrase. The developed world, the OECD, whatever, an exponential increase. Uh, as you say, everywhere really for mental health services. Are you keeping up, do you think? Is this government keeping up? Well, look, if it's just an argument about funding, there'll always be an opposition wish list for more. We've put $5 billion more into health. But in mental yeah, this health... Is, this is mental health do, we're talking about, right? In mental health, we've got to do things differently over time. It's going to take new and innovative approaches. It's going to be, you know, talking to the government science advisors, people like Richie Poulton, you know, looking at much earlier intervention. I mean, many of the signs... Uh, of mental illness and the ability to predict it. It's, it's apparent in, in kids, you know, even at the preschool stage. That's the uh, expert advice we're being given. OK, can so you we... give me an example of how you're implementing that advice, the early intervention? What are you doing to take yes. the sort of conversations you're having with Richie Poulton and turn them into policy? So we're working on this strategy at the moment. We're taking a paper to cabinet, which is just about formulated. As part of that, there will be a, a range of initiatives that will be funded by oh, this new $100 million uh, innovation fund. So action is happening. And in the meantime, the number is? 1737. 1737, Jonathan Coleman, Health Minister. We spoke to him just before we came on air.